Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition of the White Dove Ministries video blog. I um, just want to continue um, what has been an unintentional series on vision. I had done a blog last uh, a couple of weeks ago on uh, seeing things as they are rather than as they appear, which required vision. And as I was preparing to do another blog over the last couple of days, it just seems like the Lord has continued to emphasize that theme. I think vision right now is very important. And uh, what I want to talk about today is vision for the future. Or put another way, vision for the unprecedented. Because we're living in the days of unprecedented events. Things that have never occurred on planet Earth are about to occur. And uh, the only way, the only way that we're going to be prepared for what's coming is by revelation. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I, I'm going to base most of what I'm going to share today on two scriptures. Uh, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is the one that keeps the law. Another translation says, without prophetic vision, people run wild, but blessed are those who follow God's teaching. The other scripture I want to kind of emphasize, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. The Lord says he will reject us as his priest. And I don't think there is just talking about intellectual knowledge for us in the 21st century church. This is talking about prophetic vision, having vision for the future having a revelatory anointing to understand what is truth, what is deception, and what is absolute falsehood. I think probably one of the ones that in, in one sense most represents what I am uh, trying to convey is Noah. The Bible says, by faith, by faith, Noah, you know, saw the unprecedented. By faith, Noah prepared for the unprecedented. He had a revelation. How did he have a revelation? Because he had a relationship. Revelation comes by relationship. Because he had a relationship with God, God gave him a revelation, showed him something that was about to happen on planet Earth. And had he not prepared for it, he would have been destroyed. He would have been annihilated like everyone else on planet Earth. But because he had faith in something that had not yet been done on planet Earth, because he had faith in his relationship with God, because he had faith in revelation, he prepared himself, uh, built the ark, and of course, we know what happened after that. Rain had never fallen on planet Earth, and it fell for 40 days and 40 nights. Much of the same principle is being applied to us today. The Bible says something profound. It says, to each is allotted faith. To each is allotted, or to each is given a measure of faith. That's Romans 12. To each has been in, endowed delegated, entrusted, a measure of faith. You might say, yes, to each, each believer. I, I believe that says to each person. I do. I believe everyone on planet Earth is given a measure of faith, a measure of faith. Now, the question is, to what do you appropriate your faith? If faith is our currency, if faith is my spiritual currency, into what am I going to invest my faith? As a believer, as someone who is in pursuit of the Lord Jesus Christ, my faith is going to be invested in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, many today are investing their faith in so many other things. They're investing their faith in political leadership. They're investing their faith in the government. They're investing their faith in the economy and money and friendships or in some cases, some people are investing their faith in false religions, Islam or different forms of religion. There's all manner of things. There's only one true way. I'm sorry, that's what the Bible says. There's one way to the Father, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ, period. Everything else is a deception. But how does that apply to us today? I've been given a measure of faith, and I'm hearing a challenge of the Holy Spirit. That to, to carefully begin to appropriate my faith into what I know to be the revelation of the Word, the true revelation of the Word. You know, while there are many deceptions out there, 
you know, many things that are blatantly false for you and I who are Bible believers. There are also deceptions within the community of the church. <laughs> Paul makes this amazing statement, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians 11, where he's rebuking believers because they had invested themselves in another gospel. Not the gospel he preached, but one that presented the... He said, there's another gospel, another Jesus, and another spirit. There was a, a, a spirit masquerading as the Holy Spirit. And that's the one we've got to really watch out for. Because right now, there is just a lot of teachings out there. A lot of, you know, directions that people are wanting to pull the church. And the Lord is saying, I want you to invest your faith in true undiluted revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I, I've been praying for a couple of days. I was going to do this blog the latter part of last week and just some things came up and I couldn't. So over the weekend, I just prayed and said, Lord, I would you know, like for you to affirm for me what I'm to do in this blog. Well, I had a dream this morning. This one's right off the press. Haven't even had much time to process it, but I feel it speaks to, to what uh, I, I'm sharing right now but in a nutshell condensed paraphrased in my dream i was in a meeting of christian people leaders but people that had spiritual influence maybe that's a better way of putting it people that had influence on planet earth and much of what was being discussed was the fact that people were believing that the lord was going to use the existing government they were he was going to use what existed now on planet earth and basically sanctify what's on the earth and use it to establish his kingdom and the word of the lord came and said that's not true the lord is not going to sanctify the existing kingdoms he's not going to existify sanctify the existing structures and and, and forms of, of belief he's going to renew them he's going to eradicate what is here he's not going to take the world, the spirit of the world and sanctify it. He is going to replace the spirit of this world with the kingdom of God, the government of God. That was the word that came forth, that the government of God is coming and that we, ha we are citizens of another kingdom. You know, when the Lord Jesus himself was on the earth, they anticipated that he would just take over the kingdoms of this world. And he said, you don't understand. My kingdom is of another realm. My kingdom is, you have to be born again of the Spirit to participate in what's coming. When we are born again, we are a new creation. A new creation that doesn't exist in the, this natural realm in the same way that we had before. We influence this realm, but we are citizens of another kingdom, another set of laws, another set of governing principles that, that dictate our behavior. And what's coming now is a manifestation of the spirit of revelation so that we can begin to appropriate our faith towards that which is lasting. The last thing we want to do is invest our currency in something that is nothing more than a house of cards, something that will fail with no return. Paul talks about this when he talks about the judgment seat of Christ, that there is no foundation that can be laid but the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what, what you build on, you can build on that foundation with wood, hay, or stubble, or with gold, silver, and precious stones. But both will be tested by fire. If it's wood, hay, and stubble, it will be consumed. So what I want to do is invest my faith in something that will withstand the fire. <laughs> I want to be careful uh, not to be deceived and not to go just with the flow of things because they, they look like they are the right thing. You might say, how do we do that? Well, here's, here's the promise the Lord made. He said, my sheep know my voice. We have a mechanism inside of us that if we will listen to it and cultivate that through relationship, we will not be deceived. The Lord Jesus makes this amazing statement. He said, all that the Father has given me will come. All that the Father will give me have given me will come. And they will not be snatched from his hand because there's none greater than the Father. So I have this assurance, you know, that God's going to pull me back in, even if I kind of stray a little bit. Something inside of me is pulling me back. And, and for me personally, and I believe this is true for many of you, we're finding that we have less and less grace 
to stray from the straight and narrow. If we seem to be pulled one way or the other, immediately something on the inside of us is pulling us back because we have no time to waste. For many, I believe, we have been like Elijah was when he was hiding out in the cave and was drinking from the brook Cherith and being fed by the ravens. But one day the brook dried up. And I think that's the case for many of us right now. The brook has dried up. The grace for this last season is up. Now we are having to appropriate our faith for the next installment. We're having to look about where is God? Where do I find the anointing? Where do I find my grace? Where do I find my favor? What is the revelation for the unprecedented, you know, that's coming? And I, and I believe the Lord is not withholding it from us. I don't. I believe He is abundantly revealing it to those that have eyes to see and those that have ears to hear. So I guess what I'm saying in a, in a different kind of way is one of the most important things we can have right now is spiritual discernment spiritual revelation to invest ourselves to posture ourselves to position ourselves as i said in the last block it was necessary that the 120 be in a specific place to get the anointing to get god that wasn't just an anointing they got god god inhabited the 120 in the upper room but they had to be there something had to position them there they had to hear the Holy Spirit. They had to have the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Whatever all their reasons were, they were in the right place at the right time to receive the new thing. And that's where we are now. God's releasing a new thing. It says in the end, he, he makes all things new. He's not sanctifying the old thing. He's bringing something brand new. And it comes by revelation. I've just been meditating the last uh, week or so on this experience I had in 2008. And I feel it's relevant for now. But in 2008, in a very condensed way, I had this experience where I was taken right out of my body and I was taken into what I call the bowels of hell. And I saw what looked like a manhole. If people understand the street systems, especially in the South, we have these things called manholes, you know, that go down into the into the streets or into the sewer systems or whatever and had this big lead lid on it. And I was watching as this horrible demonic figure was removing the lid or the removing the manhole from some pit down in the bowels of the earth that was going to release evil on the earth of a level we have never seen. And I was screaming in my experience, no, no, but the lid was lifted up and all of a sudden I saw this black billowing stuff come pouring up out of the bowels of the earth. That was the term I used even in 2008. It was coming out of the bowels of the earth, this black stuff. And I knew that it was horrible. It was stuff that had been reserved for the end times, things that were blatantly evil and some things that were deceptively evil. And I watched as these figures, even tyrannical figures of the past like Hitler, came up, the spirit of Hitler, and came out of the bowels of hell. And, and just when I thought I could take it no more, I literally heard an audible voice above me say, and the sons of light must respond in like fashion. Well, what I forgot to tell you was I saw these demons coming out of the bowels of hell, meeting with people, releasing demonic revelation, darkness into the lives of people, and they were embracing that darkness and cooperating with darkness on planet earth. That's when I couldn't take any more. And the voice came booming out of heaven and the sons of light must respond in like fashion. And I saw these double doors open up in heaven and angels come pouring out of heaven, myriads of angels. It was as if they were, you know, a horse at the starting gate and the gate popped open and here they came. They had been waiting for eons of time, I was told that these had never been on planet earth. They had been standing in the presence of God for eons of time waiting for this moment in human history. And I saw them come pouring out of heaven to bring the revelation of Jesus Christ, to bring spiritual knowledge, to bring spiritual insight, to give the people the, the revelation and the vision for the unprecedented. 
And I saw them literally in my experience, one after another, meeting in bedrooms and in homes and in meetings and in church services with various people, giving them supernatural insight because the things that are coming on planet Earth cannot be, we cannot prepare for them by natural knowledge. It must come by, by supernatural knowledge. It must come from the unseen realm. And these angels met and were bringing that revelation. And just, it seems to me that lately, especially with the dreams that I had this morning, that these angels are either here or they're manifesting more. There's something to do with this host of heaven. And, you know, I've said this before because I know there's many teachings out there that things are going to get better and better out there in the world. But I believe the Bible is clear. Things are going to get worse and worse. <laughs> darkness is going to become even greater darkness. And, and the people are going to become even more unrestrained. And yet on the inside of that, in the midst of that, there's a remnant of God's people that are clothed in light. And their light is going to shine all the more brilliantly because of the darkness in the world. And we are going to snatch millions out of the, the jaws of death and hell. And we're going to bring a, a harvest of souls. It will happen. But it's not because what's out there is going to get better. It's going to be because we have a substitute. We have a new thing. We have an alternative. We have a kingdom that is not of this world to present to people. God's not going to sanctify what's out there. He's going to eradicate it. And he's going to replace it with a theocracy, the kingdom of God, because he, he measures everything in his kingdom on love and justice. That's why we can trust him as, as God, as a theocratic leader, because he is only one thing, that's love and justice. And we want that, and we don't mind following that and submitting ourselves to it. So, amen. I know I didn't mean for this to be quite so long, but I want you to know there is grace for revelation right now. There is grace for vision. Ask Him for it. Ask the Lord for vision to prepare you for the unprecedented as we move into this fall season. I know all the, the feasts this year are in the month of September, but i got to be honest with you. I feel like October, September and October, we're going to see some major things beginning to shift and revelation coming of a greater measure because I believe most of you are in the same boat that I feel like I'm in. The grace for the old season is up. We need a new installment. You know, there's a new plan, a new strategy. There is a new model and we all know that. We've been prophesying it and it's, it's on us. It's here in these angels, I believe, you know, the hosts of heaven, the Lord is the captain of the host. So it's all the Holy Spirit, of course. But these angels operate under the jurisdiction of the Holy Spirit and the spirit of revelation. So, Lord, I pray that you will bless the people that watch. Release an anointing, I pray. Give us understanding. Lord, give us what you gave Noah, a vision for the unprecedented. Revelation for the unprecedented because we have relationship and this assurance that you are greater than all, and we're not going to be deceived because we're pursuing you with a pure heart. We're pursuing you without agendas and without selfish ambitions. And if we do that, we are assured that we will not be deceived because we will hear the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. So my admonition is hear the voice of the Lord in this hour and position yourself for what's coming in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah.